What is up, guys? Master Gaming here, coming at you with part two of L Echo 7's AO review. So, for those that don't know, there's a link in the video on the left hand side, you know, pertaining back to the first video. Because if you're just not coming into this, you're going to be lost as hell about what the fuck I'm talking about. So, to nip all that in the butt, just click on the annotation on the left side of the screen, and then you'll be taken to part one so you can understand what's going on. Okay, so AO, we all know it pretty much suck, it's underdeveloped, and not really much thought was going into it. Um, like I said before in the previous video, I wouldn't have changed a lot of things just for, you know, really bringing back the original cast of the Gecko Estate, because, you know, they pretty much were made El Echo 7, El Echo 7. Good, well, story develop, good story development and character development is what really made the show sign, and I can understand why I got 54 episodes. It was just genius. You know, genius like that is like what made Fooly Cootie, if y'all don't know, Fooly Cootie such uh, a famous anime. Though he was even only only six episodes long, it had a great story development, and the characters were lovable. You couldn't forget about them, and it made you want to always come back and watch it for so many times. But I even think, I know some people are probably thinking, well, the Japanese version didn't make much sense because you had subtitles to read and you couldn't understand. But I don't really even think, even when it comes out to be English dub, it won't change the fact of all this well, not undeveloped storyline that they're trying to put together. It's like they're trying to make another saga to the El Echo franchise and I really think they're trying too hard by making another character that we know nothing about which they never tried to explain about back in the first season and they're trying to make something else new from it and it's, I think it's going to not be so, do so well over here in America. Now I can't say the same thing for over there in Japan from that's where it released there's probably some Japanese people that probably felt the same way that watched know the first season and was wondering what the hell was they thinking of making this second season but i don't really think english subtitles is going to really change not change anything you're going to still feel like these characters are not well story developed not really developed it's the way how i see it is english does all it does is just you know make it easy for us to understand the stuff in japanese language Despite that, it's still going to be the same storyline that was written originally over there in Japan when it was released in English, in Japanese, in Japanese. The only thing different is you just got Americans now being the voice actors for the Japanese counterparts. It's still going to be the same crappy storyline and everything else. It's just that you just got Americans, you know, speaking for all the characters. But like I said, the way how I wouldn't have done it was, you know, make this new threat the reason why you know the gecko estate has to come back together and do more development into you know why Renton and Errol Ecker are such special people and why it must always be them you know to always keep the world in balance at the same time use the support characters that you have used back during the first one to you know part of one of the key elements to keep them going forward and knock them off their path and not let them fall off their path and then you know you can introduce you know some other characters that you have probably been wanting to, you know, put into the storyline, put them into the mix, but don't just try to wipe the whole entire slate clean, and then, you know, put new pieces on the board and hope for the best that everybody likes the whole saga that they're trying to start with the Echo franchise. I just think, you know, if they was going to purposely really do a second season of El Echo Seven, they shouldn't have put more thought into it because, like, hey, oh, it only had I think about like. 12 episodes I believe and like a couple of overs and you know I can honestly tell that it's not going to live up to you know to the fame that its predecessor lived up because the predecessor El Echo 7 had 54 episodes all in one season and everybody loved that you don't hardly see that with anime you know a traditional anime will only have about 12 episodes the max is 12 episodes you'll be even lucky if you see like about 13 or 15 episodes but it's like, during back then, to see an anime like LX7 have that many episodes, you knew that there was a good team behind it. You knew that the writers really wanted to put their point across, and they could only do it within 54 episodes instead of just traditional as well. When you look at AO, you can tell that that lust is lacking. Like, we really want to tell our story in depth. But it's like with AO, we're just telling only half of the story and we're just going to leave this big conclusion cliffhanger to get people to come back 
and look at the story. You know, I can say, yeah, that may work for some animes, but don't do it with an anime that had a predecessor that had a bit that had a very big huge suggest of having long full episodes and not the traditional twelve. It can't really work like that because you really turn off a number of people when you start messing with that flow. Because now you got a whole different flow. You're not dealing with El Eka anymore. You're not really dealing with Renton anymore. You're most definitely not dealing with her three children anymore. And you're most definitely not dealing with the people from Gecko Estate. You're dealing with her supposedly made up fourth son and these new group of, I want to say, mercenaries that try to resemble the Gecko Estate and all their other type of LFOs and how they're trying to help AO find his mother and all this crap that he has to deal with while finding his mother and then they're trying to turn it into something which they can probably expand on. Honestly, in my review, what I give AO, I give it a three out of five. No, well, not a three out of five. I give it like a three out of ten. It tries to mimic the formula from what the like a seven had, but it fails at doing it. It sits up and tries to introduce too many new elements, use too many characters that have nothing relating back to the original storyline, and it tries to not rely on those original characters in order to make it go forward. I'm just saying, if you're going to make a second season to a very successful franchise that came out in 2005, one, don't try to sit up and make a new subplot dealing with the same enemies and then adding on a new part of it. If you're going to do that, keep all the original members from the very first predecessor in the loop and have them fix the problem instead of trying to create a whole new list of cast because that creates nothing but confusion for hardcore fans and leave you wondering why are they sitting up and doing it. But, you know, tell me guys what you think of Erica 7 a.m. How do you feel about it? You think they should be doing anything different? You think they should, you know, keep have the original cast come back and try to take care of the problem? Or do you, do you like this whole new set of changes? I don't. But let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay? Peace.